Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to episode number 14 of NWA Chicago. We have a jam-packed night of action on our 12th episode of Main Event Showcase. So without any further introductions, I want to take a look really quick at the Starcade Classic bracket. So here is an updated version of the bracket. As you can see, so far Nick Aldis and Flip Gordon have moved on in their matches. And tonight we will see the first round matchup of Brian Pillman Jr. and Tyler Bate. So we still do not have a fill-in opponent for Sammy Guevara to face. That will be announced next week as his match will take place next week in the Starcade Classic Tournament. So, without further introductions from this, let's start the actual show. In a pre-show bout that had subpar wrestling and little heat, the Von Erichs defeated the Hooligans in 1229 when Ross Von Erich defeated Devin Cutter by pinfall 36D-. I'm happy with that match. I think this is one of the better matches the Von Erichs have had as a tag team, and the Cutters are actually surprisingly a very good tag team themselves. So all these guys are below low mid-carders, so I wanted to give them matches against each other. I wanted to have the Von Erichs get the win here, give them a little bit more momentum. I need to get them a little bit more popular before I can actually start showcasing them on TV. But there's also the possibility that I could cut them because the cutters are a lot better in the Von Erichs role. And the cutters actually have a decent amount of potential with the ratings they're already getting. But now we move into our next segment, which is another pre-show bout that had subpar wrestling in Little Heat. Ivelisse Valdez defeated Christina Von Erie in 927 by pinfall with a disdain 37D-. minus. I think that was our second 37. Definitely our second D-. minus. 36 from Ivelisse, 34 from Christina Von Erie. So both women are performing very well here tonight. I'm very happy with that. The women's division is just killing it right now. I'm so happy. I think I... Definitely, I already feature the women's division quite a bit. I think they're going to get even more screen time going forward. And now let's start the actual show. In about that, had subpar wrestling and little heat. Kaylee Ray defeated Kira Hogan in 10-17 by pinfall with a gory bomb. 49 performance from Kaylee Ray. This match got the crowd hotter and got the show off to a strong start. 29 for Kira Hogan. So Kaylee Ray with the carry job there, 46D for the match. That is spectacular. Kaylee Ray is without a doubt our top women's wrestler right now. She's just absolutely killing it. And then after the match, she has a microphone. And she says, Tanil Dashwood, I'm coming for my NWA World Women's Championship back. You may have gotten the better of me at All In, but we both know who the better wrestler really is. Because she's standing in this ring right now. You can duck and evade me as much as you want, but I will win my championship back. I will scratch and claw my way back up to the top of this division. You will never. 34 E+. Plus. This was based off of Kaylee Ray's microphone and Tanil Dashwood's overness, which is why it advances, but lost heat for the It's All About Her storyline. And Tessa Blanchard attacks Kaylee Ray from behind with a clothesline. Tessa begins stomping on Kaylee Ray before standing her up, hitting her with a hammerlock DDT in the middle of the ring. And then Tessa does her pose, you know, where she looks backward over her shoulder over Kaylee Ray as we go to commercial 41D. Tessa Blanchard comes and takes out Kaylee Ray after Kaylee Ray calls out to Neil Dashwood. We've got all these intermingling story arcs in this women's division, and I absolutely love it. I love that I have a women's division that is strong enough to withstand all these different segments. I love it. In about that, a decent wrestling but didn't have much heat. The Motor City Machine Guns defeated Star and Dunn in 1559 when Chris Saban defeated JT Dunn by pinfall with a made in Detroit. The Motor City Machine Guns make defense number one of their NWA Tag Team titles. 51D plus for the match. I wasn't sure whether or not I should make it a title match or not, but... Why have the tag team champions wrestle on TV in a non-title match is my philosophy. So this is their first title defense against David Starr and JT Dunn. Upper 50s for the guns and 35s for Starr and Dunn. Match got the crowd hotter. Decent tag team match there. Uh, Saban and Shelley obviously had excellent chemistry. So this was just to get them a TV match to showcase them because they are now the crown jewel of my tag team division with these performances. Chris Saban and Alex Shelley of Mike's after the match, and they say, Saban starts it off, Windy City, how we doing tonight? And the crowd goes wild because, you know, pandering to the hometown crowd is what baby faces do. And Shelley says, I mean, this isn't the Motor City, but it's still pretty damn good. Back to Saban. When we joined this company, the night of All In, Alex and I came in with the goal of elevating the tag team division in this company beyond anything any company has ever seen before. We saw this as an opportunity 
to join on the ground floor of something great. Shelly says, we saw this tag team division improving week after week after week, but we recognized that it that someone really needed to spark the growth, make it exponentially grow. Someone needed to really kick this division into high gear, and we knew we were just the men to do it. Back to Saban, and he says, And here we stand as the NWA World Tag Team Champions. And Alex and I are one of the greatest tag teams of all time. So we, the, we expect the competition to really pick things up, especially if anyone has any hope of taking these tag team titles from us. So we eagerly await our next challenge. 44D for that. So the Guns have their first real televised promo here, and I'm happy with that. 44D, not the best, but not terrible. They are our tag team champions. So now we move into the next segment. In about that, a decent wrestling but little heat. Ricky Reyes defeated Arjenes in 1152 by pinfall with a super kick. Ricky Reyes makes defense number one of his NWA World Television title. 44 for Arjenes, 38 for Ricky Reyes, 46D for the match. So consistently, these shows are getting better and better, and I'm very happy with it. We've got some great wrestlers in there putting on some great matches. Ricky Reyes, I don't think Joe Hendry was in the main event with the television title. Ricky Reyes isn't really going to be in the main event with the television title like I did with Tyler Bate because I don't feel like their matches are the quality that I want to continue going forward in the main event slot. When we first started out and most of our segments were getting E's and E pluses, I think it was acceptable to have Tyler Bate in that because Tyler Bate was improving. He was kind of anchoring our show. He was at times putting on D-level matches. And don't get me wrong, Ricky Reyes is putting on D-level matches, but we also have better people to put in the main event, people that I would like to be in the main event more than guys like Ricky Reyes. And that's not a knock on Ricky Reyes. It's just he's an older guy that we're giving a title reign to out of respect almost and because he's got really not much else to do, which that pulls back the uh, sheet a little bit and lets you guys know my plans for Ricky Reyes. They're not huge. This push isn't going to amount to a lot, but decent little run for the, him here with the title is what it's going to be. So I'm happy with this one. And after the match, Reyes continues to stomp Arjenes until he kicks him out of the ring and stands tall with his NWA World Television Championship held high. 44D, so just showing the aggression of Ricky Reyes a little bit. He kind of like kicks Arjenes under the ropes like wrestlers do and stands tall with that title just to give him a little bit of personality because I don't know what his promo skills are really like. And I don't think I want to give him a promo right now, but just to show a little bit of personality for Ricky Reyes. In a bout that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, Taji Ishimori defeated Magnus in 833 by pinfall with a Telerana, 51D+, 54 for Ishimori, 36 for Magnus. It's a good performance for Magnus, not gonna lie. But Taji Ishimori once again is the star of his match as he gets a nice televised match here and afterwards, Danielle steps into the ring with her client Taji Ishimori and she says, this right here, Taji Ishimori, this is what a winner looks like. I know. I know, all the women here tonight want to be with winners like Taji, and all the men here tonight wish they could be winners like Taji. But that's what separates all of you common people from someone like Taji. You're all losers. Just like Cody is going to be a loser in two weeks when he defends his title against Taji Ishimori. That's right, it's official. Taji is the number one contender and next NWA World Heavyweight Champion. You might as well call me the Fairy Godmother, because what my clients want, they get. And Danielle winks at the camera, and she says, So Taji and I will see you all in two weeks for the biggest match in NWA Main Event Showcase history. 30-60 minus, so this was an improvement after the first promo. If I remember correctly, the first promo with Danielle and Taji was, I think, an E+, so this is an improvement on that. Danielle obviously has great mic skills. I don't know why she's not getting really over promos. Taji's overness, it was rated on her microphone, Taji's overness. Taji's overness is in the 50s. Her microphone is in the 70s. Her overness is in at least the 30s, maybe the 40s. So that might be what's capping these segments. But we're going to keep going with the pairing of Danielle and Taji Ishimori because he cannot speak English and he's going to be possibly a major player down the line. So next segment. It is the Bate and Brian Pillman Jr. match. And no, it is not. A graphic is shown hyping the NWA World Women's Championship match between Tony Storm and Tennille Dashwood next week. 
24E. It was based off of both their overnesses. Tony Storm's not extremely over, which is why it didn't get rated as highly as it should have. However, now we go into the main event of Tyler Bate and Brian Pillman. Starcade Classic Round 1 match. And in a terrible match, Tyler Bate defeated Brian Pillman Jr. in 1301 by pinfall with a Tyler Driver 9735E+. 36 for Tyler Bate, 23 for Brian Pillman Jr. I knew this match wasn't going to be fantastic when I booked it as the main event, but Tyler, I believe, is a main event player. Brian Pillman Jr., I wanted to give him some more exposure. This is by far the highest spot he's had on any of our cards so far. Put him in there with a kind of high-profile guy like Tyler Bate, at least high-profile on our roster. Longest reigning television champion that we've had. So I thought it was a good idea. I knew we were going to take a hit in terms of the match rating, which is why I kind of stacked the rest of the card to kind of absorb this blow for the main event spot. And then after the match, Tyler Bate has a microphone and he says, I haven't had a chance to address the elephant in the room yet. So let me begin there. Pete Dunn. Peter and I have had what feels like a long and bitter history. However, we're both still so young and our rivalry has really only just begun. And now, he's come to NWA Chicago to make my life miserable. You may be here for vengeance, but I am here to win. I am here to win the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, just as I won the NWA World Television Championship. This is where I have my sights set. That is where I have my sights set. I plan on winning the Starcade Classic. Going on to main event Starcade and defeat Cody for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. This is my focus and my goal. If I have to run through Pete Dunn on my way, so be it. But make no mistake, you do not cloud my vision, Peter. I do not have this obsession with you that you have with me. So best of luck to you, and I hope you can get some help. 37D- minus for this promo from Tyler Bate. So the purpose of this promo is to really say, hey, Pete Dunne has the obsession with attacking Tyler Bate and ruining Tyler Bate's career, but Tyler Bate is only focused on winning and glory and making sure that he has the career that he wants. He's not going to let Pete Dunne get in the way of that. So 37 D minus. Happy with that. For the show, the show definitely got a D, a solid D, not a D plus, not a D minus, got a solid D, and it got a D minus. Damn it, I was wrong. Show increased our popularity in 16 regions, so we did not increase in the Great Lakes region or the Mid-South. I also think this might be below our broadcaster requirements, which is not a good thing. So let's go see what this got on TV while I check and make sure it did not, it was not below the standards. I really thought that this would have been a good enough show, but now I'm seeing that it was so stacked in the beginning of the show, and then really after the Taji Ishimori match, it kind of started to fall flat because we're just 40s and 50s, for most of the show, and then 30s after that, so I should have put it together a little bit more, maybe rearranged, I could have had Ricky Reyes main event the show, and that would have been fine, honestly, but that was my mistake, so now let's check television ratings. Alright, so that episode of NWA Main Event Showcase was held, as always, in the NWA Arena in Chicago, Illinois, in front of 1,525 fans, so the attendance is a little bit down. On TV, we only drew a .06, which is still 51,630 viewers, and of course, the show got a 40D-, which is actually the bare minimum we need to meet broadcaster requirements, so we just eked it out there, happy with that, so thank you guys for watching episode number 14, and I will see you guys in episode number 15, hope you guys enjoyed the show, and see you guys.